the ethical challenge of the edge. Edge presents, as does all all of the compute within uh, the compute being considered to be technology. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Ultimately, it's a tool, yep. and we have to have um, we have to think about what we're doing when we're doing it, um, like all tools, mm -hmm. right? Any tool can be used for good purposes or it can be used for destructive purposes. A hammer can build or a hammer can knock down. Mm -hmm. And similarly, in, in the world of what we live in, I think that we do have a little bit of a gap from, from our computer sciences and, and, and the like in terms of what we do with what we mm -hmm. create and, and how we think about prevention of things from a negative perspective, prevention of how people can use information, we have to think about that because not everybody's out for good intentions and uh, I think sometimes we lose sight of that within the context of uh, how we go about implementing things, not just at the, at the edge level but throughout the compute infrastructure. The edge for me, the definition of the edge is, is logical, it's not physical. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm a giant, the edge might mean megawatts mm -hmm. at an edge. Um, to use a poor term in terms of megawatts, uh, mm -hmm. but um, and it, it could mean a, a single instance of a, of a virtual machine uh, in another in another case, and so or it could mean even less than that, uh, just a transaction. Mm -hmm. So I, I think the edge is really in the, in the in the application use case. I think from a logic from a logical perspective, each piece, um, whether you're talking infrastructure, you're talking telecommunications. Uh, whether you're talking about it at, at an application layer, I think each one would define it a little bit differently. In my world, on the infrastructure side, you know, we think about things in building block increments, and I like to think of the edge in less than, you know, the, the 300 kilowatt type of range within the brick and mortar space. Addressing the reliability challenge through the replication of a lot of different nodes in a lot of different locations, I think it just boils down to doing what history has done before us. Um, so how do you support a utility infrastructure from a power company perspective? How do you support telecommunications infrastructure on a, on a ubiquitous basis? Ultimately, you've got to follow some simple principles in terms of e commonality. Um, yes, maybe you deploy a little bit more than what you wanted or a little bit less than what you wanted for the sake of consistency and supportability. I like to call it the truck roll problem. Ultimately, at the end of the day, what can I do to prevent me from having to rush out to go deal with the issue at that point in time and I think that's going to continue to be um, really the problem that we're solving which is much more utilitarian in nature than it is really technology in nature. We utilize the tier ready certification from uptime um, to help our clients to more quickly understand how how to use our products. Uh, we basically work within 1.2 megawatt blocks. How would you like to configure them? Having the ability to have those be tier ready, it helps to identify to that client. In our case, we have a tier three ready, a concurrently maintainable 1.2 megawatt block. Therefore, each 1.2 megawatt block is concurrently maintainable on its own. So how they can assemble those products, uh, it, it just helps with that, with that conversation. It helps with the the um, understanding from that client that what they're going to get is, is already somebody else has tested it. Um, and this once again gets back to just the utility nature of, of what we, where we believe that compute will continue to go as we move it um, from, from the white collar to the blue collar type of industry that it is in, in terms of just providing the infrastructure for the, for the, for the age. Is a panel like the Edge panel useful to me? I, in one of the things I like about coming to conferences and, and being with a lot of my peers is, is to have discussions that we wouldn't otherwise have. Um, so it's always fun to, to have a little bit of jesting, a little bit of jousting, um, as well as, as a little bit of different lens on things to get, to get from uh, different viewpoints. You can't ever learn enough. Uh, you can't ever have enough lenses with which to see the world and perspectives uh, can help shift things so much in terms of where dogma and opinion come, for, come from. So I do enjoy it from that perspective. One of the great things from a DCD perspective as far as a conference like this is, is getting together with, with peers, getting together with other thought leaders in the industry and having the opportunity outside of a day in and day out work environment to exchange thoughts and ideas and I think that's really where the value of DCD comes to play.